Hi, um, to continue, I know it's probably too late for you tonight, um, hair is like fuzz ever since I cut it, like fuzz, like I need a VO5 hot oil treatment, I don't know what to do about it, I'm just kind of reveling in its weird fuzziness, I've tried a few products I have around the house, but smoothing things. Anyway, um, don't you think that I haven't noticed how fuzzy my hair is? Um, okay, so Paul found me just when I was kind of getting gearing up talking about my job at Ben Jerry's, which um, the main thing about it was people who have been out of the workforce for a very long time because of their issues. That's what I was kind of babbling about, whether it was drugs or... Um, Homelessness, prostitution, whatever. Um, health issues. So, okay. Um, okay, so I kind of had this um, drab life. Um, my friend Chris, I don't know if she's around. No, she went to Maryland for the summer. Um, and she's like an annoying friend. My other friend Chris, boy Chris, lived in Brooklyn and he became obsessed with me, which was really annoying. I did make out with him a couple of times, but I never sucked his cock or fucked him or anything. Um, and I, I hated him. Like at first I liked him and then I hated him. Um, uh, this is just my summer. Mostly I'd be commuting an ever, never ending R train to Times Square. Um, just working, kind of hard work physically and dealing, it was just busy, lot, really annoying customer service. I would have junkies shooting up in the bathroom, that kind of thing. The neighborhood was seedy. And so, um, uh, there was this guy there, he called himself Adzik, and he was Mexican, um, and he was not cute. Um, he Maybe if he'd had a normal haircut, he kind of had a curly mullet and um, a beaky kind of face, and... He, you know, we all had to wear a, this, like this stupid Ben and Jerry t-shirt. Did that. <laughs> and he wore like, God, you know, you'd probably love him now, but those woven, wooly, striped pants, maybe even cuffed at the bottom, like ethnic looking. Like he probably got them in Mexico. He was Mexican. Like, you know, it would be the stripes. It would be like purple and teal and red and you know what I'm talking about, right? Nubby. Um, and like sandals. And he just, his face was not great looking. I mean, but I think that if he had a completely different style, you know, he could be found more attractive. Um, but we started flirting, um, like everybody else, I liked everybody, I liked everybody that we worked with, um, they all were like lovable in one way or another, but he was a little more, um, bright and on the ball, and he, he lived in the Times Square Hotel, they all did, um, and once in a while he would bring down his violin, and he'd play so beautifully, and he said that he had been a um, member of the Mexico City Symphony Orchestra. I don't know if that's true or not, but he sounded great. And um, I had to hand him his paycheck once. And it said on the envelope, it was like Cesar or Tiz or whatever. Um, I don't know if it was definitely Cesar. I don't remember the last name. Um, I handed it to him, and I was like, I thought your name was Atzik. And he's like, it's a long story, I'll tell you another time. I was like, okay. And 
Um, we started this thing, it was crowded behind the counter. We had a lot of staff and it's like bulky shake machines and things and just a lot of people in a narrow space. So it's like he would scooch by me from behind, like grabbing my hips, my waist, and uh, little things started happening. And uh, one day he asked me up to his room. This is not the day that we did it. We did it once. And he had these little snack cakes. They were kind of like tasty cakes. Um, they're frozen. It's kind of cool. And um, he like made tea and gave me a tasty cake. But he, and I felt nervous being there. Like, what am I doing? Like, I didn't feel like sex was in the air. But just like even being in him, his room, I really wasn't attracted to him. But yet this weird attraction was building. Um, um, what does my wheel feel? Um, um, and he had this, um, calendar on the wall with all these X's and I was like, have I told you this story? I was like, what are those X's for? And he's like, he's like, until the day. And I was like, what day? And he pulls out his copy of the Celestine Prophecy. Do you remember that book from the nineties? Um, I personally didn't read it. Um, but I guess it's like... <laughs> like shaman in South America, like and have this knowledge that I don't I don't know what it's about. It's kind of at the end of the world, I guess. D do you know? I don't remember. He starts telling me all about it, but I completely forgot. This is a book that it was a huge bestseller for a couple of years. And to me it was just like something to ignore or make fun of like it was it was nothing to me and he's like earnestly telling me about the Celestine prophecy and whatever the prophecy is he had a countdown to it to the date of the prophecy coming true <sighs> I really am tired it's not just the drugs um so I was repulsed by him and I was attracted to him. And I missed Paul so much. And I got like a, a, one postcard and one phone call. And, um, and the postcard was very sweet. But um, I missed him. And I was so worried. Cell phones didn't exist, or not, at least not for common people. And um, like I was so afraid every day. Um, I got this weird neurotic thing, like, um, if the clock struck 11.11, 11, I had to not look at it until it was 11.12, and if I looked at it and it was still 11.11, 11, then, like, something bad might happen to Paul. I have rid my brain of most of those types of, whatever those are, uh, problems. <laughs> um, but I was intensely anxious, missing him on my heart, on my soul. And not even thinking, I don't remember even thinking about, like, they are, he's going to, like, move somewhere. I, like, that was, that was too hard for me to, like, keep in my head. I think I thought, oh, this trip will get him out of, it out of his system and then he'll be so happy to be back. Um, anyway, so, but, so I was, like, simultaneously, like, compartmentalizing, like, Paul, I adore you and I miss you. And then like, I am so lonely and bored. And here is like a man paying attention to me. And I have no friends. And Chris is paying attention to me too, but he's infuriating. Um, and like kind of dumb. He's so smart. He teaches philosophy at Brooklyn College now, but like, there's something dumb about him. But anyway, um, so uh, yeah. That was that's what was my summer, and then one night I don't remember. So I got to the point where I wouldn't go home after I work, a group real five or six, because I didn't want to go see Norma. Carol Ann would work late as always, and I kind of hated Norma. She was nice. She she was nice, but we had no connection, no connection at all. 
nothing to talk about. And she'd be in my room. And I just couldn't handle it. So I started avoiding home. And I would hang out on the steps of the Times Square Hotel with all this kind of riffraff. Like, there was Cece, she was a prostitute, and she wanted me. She a lesbian prostitute. And, um, I, like, she would sit really close to me and, like, stroke my leg. And um, other just characters, ruffians. And um, so one of the, when I remember one of those nights... He gave this beautiful, uh, Atik gave this beautiful um, performance with his violin. And uh, that, I think that was the night. And um, he, it was like, the sex wasn't that bad, had orgasm. And uh, so, yeah. But the next day, and uh, keep in mind, I'm 21 years old. So I didn't come home that night. And I guess that freaked out my sister. And she had security bashing on the door. And I don't know, I don't think she would have known where in the building I would have been. But I guess security would have been aware of, like, oh, he was hanging out. Like her being like, my sister has blue eyes, I had blonde hair at the time. Uh, oh, we saw him, Etsy hanging out with her, or something like that must have happened. Bam, 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 bam. And it was like a police raid. It was mortifying. And then my sister started calling that number. And she's like, what are you doing? What are you doing there? What are you doing there? You come home right now. I know 21 is like barely an adult, but it's an adult. And you're not my mom, you're my sister. You're fucked up. That was mortifying, and we never did it again, and I didn't ever want to do it again. Uh, so, um, anyway, that was my summer. A lot of boredom and loneliness, and this weird thing with him. And Paul comes home, and they show up at the shop, named Ryan, and he's really distant. And um, then I went to Long Island with them, and distant, 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 and at some point, he was like, we're going to move to Portland. And I don't remember if it was that day or whatever, but he, in a timely manner, he told me. And I was like, can I come with you? And he was like, if you want. And my father had diagnosed um, brain cancer. And I was like, could you stay around until like he, he's got, he's terminal. He's got a short prognosis like six months and he's not fighting it like my mother did and like I think he's gonna go and he was like mm, I don't want to stick around like for anything this might have to be a part three <laughs> because I'm running out of time so instead of being like I break up with you I start looking to like well, he did say if I want to, um, it would be kind of humiliating to move right to Portland. Um, so I'll go to Evergreen. I found out about Evergreen. I was like, I could go to the school Evergreen. It's pretty cheap, even for an out-of-state person. And it's um, only a few hours away. And um, I could do that. And I would be close, but far away. He could have a space, but I'd be close. I mean... Uh, it's just desperate. I was just desperate fool. I lost my mother. My father was about to die. My sister was insane. I had like no real home. I had nothing. I didn't have that many friends at that point because uh, my core friends had graduated and like left the state. So I didn't really have. I had like two friends that I didn't like that much. So and it's New York City. It's hard. Like if I had wanted to move out of my sister's place, it would be so hard. Just being an ice cream scooper. I had no, um, I just didn't have any clue, like job ambitions or, it's not, it's not like I, it's not like I proudly didn't want to do anything. I, like, beyond the like, retail, was like, I just didn't know. You know, I knew I was good at writing and reading and I didn't know how to apply that to anything. And, uh, yeah, so, um, I have to hang up now, but I think I'm going to give you a part three about today.